Welcome to Vancouver Market Reports. This is part two of an interview with Ron Antelak from Remax Lifestyles in Maple Ridge as we discuss the effects of the bridges that have now put Maple Ridge on the map. With you, but when the bridges were opening, like we got the new twinning of the Port Man happening here, I, I typically say we're moving the the commuter 20 minutes closer to work in commuting time, and that should reflect in, in my opinion, about $2,500 per minute of closer commute. But uh, when you go and throw a toll on it, all of a sudden you add in that factor. I'm going to know. I don't know if this is going to help at all. It might actually be a detriment. In fact, with a with a toll on the Port Man and no toll on the Pitt River, that actually might make Maple Ridge even more acceptable over time, right? More um, the Gateway Report came out from the provincial government in 1986 in the month of May, uh, essentially five years ago, and the provincial government's Gateway of, uh, effect, that report was the twinning of the Port Man, Delta Perimeter, Golden Ears Bridge, and, and the the new Pit River bridging. The Pit River bridge is in, the Golden Ears bridge is in, and everybody's asking why our price is not rising. The projected report in May 2006 was released, and the projection was a 20% increase the moment the ribbon was cut. The Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver had me as their spokesperson for the interview for the Vancouver Sun in May 2006, and my opinion, I disagreed. I'm always an optimist. I only want to comment to the media with optimistic opinions, but the reality was is their projections of cutting the ribbon at a 20% jump wasn't going to happen. I basically encouraged people to buy now because the long-term effect of these two major bridges going into Maple Ridge is going to dramatically change things in time, but it's not yet. And what it is is probably in five years from now you'll start seeing pricing starting to get towards the Langley level, the Port Coquitlam level. But right now, the, yes, the sales are dramatically down compared to tri Absolutely, Right. So interesting. But uh, Ron, here's one very interesting thing we've learned over time. And, and let's just say approximately 74% of the, the buyers right now in the sort of the uh, tri-cities to uh, Richmond area are of mainland China money. Uh, just for a number, uh, those folks' job sources are not in Canada. The majority of them are still working in Shanghai or Beijing, making good money, and they're satellite commuters. I mean, they don't take the bus or the train or drive to work. They fly to work, right? And yeah. for your your um, client base in Maple Ridge, They've got the regular jobs, and they're they're actually commuting to work, and there's not a lot of jobs. I mean, I don't see any big increase in local employment where you know mainland China, of course, is having huge, huge growth. Still, even though they've got some slowdowns happening, there is extreme money being made in mainland China. I think for the general populace, they do really have to understand across the Pitt River Bridge, if it is in an area that attracts the Chinese or the Iranian or the South Korean in investor, that is a dramatically different marketplace than in Maple Ridge, which gets, I'm assuming, very little. Do you want to speak as to how you feel you've seen a difference on where the Asian money focuses and how much difference that can make in values? Well, I agree. I think the only sort of predominant speculation in Maple Ridge is we have an urban reserve, um, which is projected to be the next go-to area for residential development uh, approximately 10 years from now. We do have a large Asian um, investor group in that area. Um, Maple Ridge actually in um, November 2010 uh, was designated the number five top Canadian investment city, and Maple Ridge um, getting that was basically, you know, the future growth. The, the the Golden Ears Bridge predominantly being the biggest variable in that. But what was said with this nomination and why is that Maple Ridge right now, under the current official community plan and the Metro Vancouver Vision 2040 has designated a very large area of Maple Ridge um, for redevelopment 
in what they call employment generating and commercial lands. And those lands lie between 232nd Street and 240th in Maple Ridge. Mm -hmm. And that is currently at the Agricultural Land Commission for consideration, and it has passed through our mayor and council. So this is the beginning of ultimately what Maple Ridge needs to mature, become more of a complete community, maybe copying a little bit of the successes of Langley. And the Walnut Grove kind of development and the commercial component that evolved there is what ultimately this, what we call Albion Flats, is supposed to uh, provide. And that is going to provide employment. It's going to provide, um, in addition to that, commercial base. Our population is 75,000 people. And the projection is that to exceed 100,000 within the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So those are projections. And without the Golden Ears Bridge, which brings it into Golden Ears Way, which goes straight into 176, which goes straight to the U.S. border, and this is all what we call part of, you know, the the uh, gateway effect. And Maple Ridge is now connected. Until that bridge opened, it was not. It was an island. It had a opening railway bridge at the Pitt River and it had an archaic 50-year-old ferry running to Fort Langley. Mm -hmm. So Maple Ridge has dramatic change. It needs time. It needs investment. And infrastructure is there. It's the balance kind of coming. This is why it's not a complete community, and this is why the Asian population is probably not embracing it yet. But once it's more complete, this is the projection. So maybe a great place to invest now and in five years from now, you may see dramatic differences that, you know, the Tri-Cities are seven minutes away. Mm -hmm. So Langley from West Maple Ridge is three minutes away. Wow. Well, listen, I mean, for sure, uh, quite honestly, Maple Ridge just came on the map because it was hard to get to. Uh, I mean, uh, taking a ferry is, is, is very, very chancy and long waits, etc. So... The, t the 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 Golden Ears Bridge is fantastic. So that that really did put Maple Ridge on the map. And I do agree. I mean, it's got the urban reserve. It's got the industrial base. It has really good potential to grow. So I I agree with you on a long term. Looks good. And for everyone out there wondering why it is different than uh, say Tri Cities, and it just has not at this point attracted the Asian buyer, right? Correct. I agree with that. Totally concur with that statement. Yeah. Ron, I want to thank you for your um, your time. And anybody wanting to know anything about the Maple Ridge area, do contact Ron Antelec directly at Remax Lifestyles. And uh, what's some contact information there, Ron? Yes, and phone number is 604-351-3261. And website is ronantelec.com. And email is ronantelec at remax.net. And it's ronantelec is R-O-N-A-N-T-A-L-E-K. I'm glad. Okay, well, I'm glad you spelled that out, Ron. I'm afraid Antelec would stump me most times, okay? So that was great. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, well listen, I appreciate your, your um, market update for the Maple Ridge area. And we look forward to your next follow-up later on in the year. Talk to you soon, Bill. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for spending the time with VancouverMarketReports.com. I'm Bill Coughlin, Remax Little Oak Realty in Abbotsford, and I invite you to come back every month and spend time as we interview other market experts throughout the Lower Mainland. Bye-bye for now.